Yes, the bedposts were his own, the bed was his own, the room was his own. Best and happiest of all, the time ahead of him was his very own. I will live in the past, the present, and the future. My cards, they are not out the window, not torn to shreds. There they are, and I am here, and the shadows of things that would have been will be dispelled. I know it. Brother! The door to the room opened, and in walked the younger Kaiba, summoned most likely by his sibling's merriment. Dressed in his oversized pajamas, which were purple and long in the arms, so they hung over his hands. This fact isn't especially relevant to the tale. However, it's always worth taking a moment to address how Mokuba's adorableness rivals that of a kitten. Mokuba! I don't know what to do! I am as light as a feather! I am as happy as an angel! I am as merry as a schoolboy! I am as giddy as a drunken man! I am as smiley as the pot of greed! <laughs> no wonder you don't know what to do! Seto, nobody knows what Pot of Greed does. Oh, a Merry Christmas to you, little brother. Ah, that is, it is Christmas, is it not? Of course it is. Then I haven't missed it. The spirits have done it all in one night. They can do anything they like, of course they can. Of course they can. You know the Poulterer's just in town. Do you know whether they've sold the prize turkey that was hanging up in there? Not the little prize turkey, the big one. The one as big as me? It's hanging there now. Go and buy it. Then order somebody to drop it to my clerk's home. But, brother, it's Christmas. Will it even be open today? I expect so. We're at that point in the plot. Now go! Seto, I know I'm a little... But even so, if there is a turkey the same size as me, perhaps it's not the best to be eating. Should I just get the smaller turkey instead? Uh, yes. Mokuba nodded too, and was off like a shot for real this time. Seto dressed in a hurry, barely able to do up his buttons for he was shaking so much. Then he took to the streets in search of a man. A specific one, that is. He found him quick enough, that unusual but not protagonist-worthy hair standing out in the crowd. How do you do? Mr. Kaiba? Yes, that is my name. And I fear it may not be pleasant to you. Allow me to ask your pardon, and if you'll have the goodness... And he whispered an amount in the man's ear. Uh, uh, I don't know what to say. Say nothing, but please come and visit me sometime. Will you do that? Tristan did promise, and Seto walked away after thanking him. He jovially walked the streets and watched people hurry to and fro, filling his morning with cheer, before rushing home to be with the one person he wished to spend the season with more than any other. Seto was up late that night with his dear Mokuba, and up early again the next morning to make it to the office. If only he could catch Yugi behind schedule, that was what he had his heart set on. And he did. The clock struck nine, and there was no sign of Yugi. Then five passed, ten passed, and at last, at eighteen minutes past, the door opened and in stepped young Moto, shrugging off his coat. What is the meaning of this? <laughs> I, I, I apologize. I was a brother late last night, but it's only once a year. Moto, I'm afraid I cannot abide this situation any longer. And therefore, Moto, I am about to raise your salary. You! I beg your pardon? Yes, my friend. Raise your salary. And rest assured, I will help you and your family in any way I can. A Merry Christmas, Yugi. Merrier than I've ever had, and many more to come. Seto was better than his word. He did it all and infinitely more. He became as good a friend, as good a master, and as good a man as the good old city ever knew. It was often said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas all year round as well as anyone. May that truly be said of us, and all of us. And as Karibo, who did not die, observed, and I don't think I need to tell you what that means. <laughs>